Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and the last couple of weeks have been pretty busy as you might know I had to fly back to the UK last week for a few days to sort out some stuff with my bank and that all went well that's all sorted out now so I am now able to submit Equinox to Steam but because it's my first time releasing a game on Steam that process can take up to 30 days according to the Steam website so there's still going to be plenty of time to polish up Equinox and do a bit of marketing and that's what I'm going to be doing this week. This week's actually going to be another short week, unfortunately. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to Prague with my parents for my birthday. So not a whole load of time for development this week. But yesterday, I got some of the boring tasks out of the way. I did some balancing, some marketing preparations, and also tried to catch up on my emails. But today, I'm getting back to work on the programming, and I'm going to implement some of the suggestions and improvements for Aquilinox. So getting started with the programming now, and I've just been planning out exactly which tasks I'm going to be doing today. I've been getting a lot of suggestions from the Patreon supporters recently, who have been testing the game a lot, which is great. And obviously I've also been playtesting the game whenever I can, just trying to find anything that isn't completely polished, anything, any little bugs or glitches or even typos, just anything that could be improved. And I've made a bit of a to-do list here, which I'll be working my way through today. First couple of tasks for the day done, so firstly there was a bit of a transparency issue with the sleeping or the snoring particles for the animals, so you can see that there was a kind of dark outline around them which shouldn't be there, and also when they faded out they became a bit darker, so I've just been fixing that and that's looking a lot cleaner now. And secondly, for the in-game tasks, I've now ordered their rewards by type so that the order that they're listed in is always the same. So it's always item unlocks first, then task unlocks, and then DP rewards, just so that there's a bit of consistency between all the tasks. Half past 11 now, and I've just been going through all of the in-game tooltips and checking that they're all up to date. So whenever you mouse over a button, you get a tooltip which tells you what that button does. And because I've changed a few things in the game recently, a few functionality changes, I wanted to make sure that all of these tooltips are up to date. And I've also just been adding tooltips to buttons that didn't already have them. And um, in a bit, I'm going to do a similar thing with the button sound effects. But first, I'm just going to take a quick break and cycle down to the plant shop to get a couple of things. Back to work now, and as I mentioned earlier, I've just been doing a bit of work on the sound effects for the buttons, and um, I've just been going through all the buttons and making sure that they all make the same kind of sound effects in the same kind of situations, because previously some buttons made noises when you moused over them, some made sounds when you clicked on them, some didn't make any sound effects at all. So again, it's all about consistency, just making sure that all the buttons act in the same way. Next up today, just adding a quick update that someone suggested to me recently, which is to show the generation number of an animal in its pop-up panel. So um, when you first place an animal in the world, obviously that's a first generation animal, and then when it has children there'll be second generation, and when they have children it'll be third generation. So in the pop-up panel you can now check to see how many generations have gone by since the sheep were originally added to that area. So I'm going to stop for my lunch break now, and I'm also going to plant a few more vegetables on the balcony. So I finished planting out some more of the balcony. I planted some rocket, some spinach, some spring onions, some beetroot, and you can also see that the radishes that I planted the other week are growing nicely. But uh, this afternoon I'm doing a bit of work on the website. I've just been finalising a few of the designs, trying to improve the appearance a bit, and um, a guy called Sam actually sent me some excellent example designs recently, which I've been taking some inspiration from. But the website's very nearly done now. In terms of content and features and functionality, it's pretty much finished, but we're still just going through all the pages, trying to improve the designs and the appearance a bit. But it should hopefully all be up and running in the next couple of weeks. Back to work on the disease system this afternoon, which you might remember from a couple of weeks ago I showed in the video, um, the disease system where animals can get diseased if they're not happy with their environment, and then they can spread the disease if you're not careful. And I've just been trying to balance all of the probabilities to do with this system, 
So for example, the chance of an animal catching a disease and how it depends on how happy it is with the environment, the chance of it passing on the disease and also the chance of it being cured. So I've just been trying to balance all of those things and make sure that disease doesn't happen too often um, and that it's not too devastating when it does, but that it should cause a little bit of a problem sometimes. Just finishing off of the day now and I've just been able to cross the final task of the to-do list here, which was to show in the entity pop-up panel how likely it is for that animal to get diseased and if it already is diseased it would show the likelihood of that animal getting cured. So that's everything done for today and uh, this evening a couple of friends are coming over and we're going to make some summer rolls together for dinner, which I've been doing quite a lot recently but it's just a very nice quick easy thing to make with friends. Wednesday morning and first up I've just been fixing a bit of an issue to do with worlds loading so when you switch worlds a lot of the loading actually happens as soon as you click that play button which leads to that rather big pause between clicking the button and the loading bar being shown which obviously isn't how it should happen all the loading should happen while the loading bar is shown so I've just been changing a few things around in the code and uh, now when you switch worlds, you can see that clicking the play button instantly brings up the loading screen and then any loading happens while the progress bar is shown. Next up this morning, I've just been balancing the beaver's behavior a bit. So the beavers go around cutting down trees to get wood and they then use that wood to build lodges in the water. But the problem is that they cut down those trees a bit too often and it usually ends up with the deforestation of an entire area which then means that they don't have enough wood to keep repairing their lodge. So I've just been trying to tweak this a bit so that the trees produce a little bit more wood so that it's not so easy for the, for the beavers to completely destroy an area of trees. You still need to be careful about which trees you plant there to make sure that the trees that you plant do produce enough wood, but it's now just a little bit easier to have beavers in a balanced ecosystem. Anyway, it's another lovely day today, so I'm gonna take a quick break and get outside for a bit. For the last hour or so I've just been working on various little bits and bobs here and there, just a lot of very small little tweaks and improvements. For example I updated the genetic modification button because previously I was just using a placeholder icon. And I also changed the style of the button because, again, with the consistency, most of the buttons in the game change colour when you mouse over them, but this button, as you can see, was changing size when you moused over it, so I've just fixed that to make it more similar to the other buttons in the game. Coming up to 6 o'clock in the evening now, and there hasn't been a whole load to show you this afternoon, unfortunately. I've pretty much finished going through all the suggestions and bug fixes that I have at the moment, so I was just doing a bit of general balancing this afternoon and then I started doing some editing for this video because I don't want to leave it all to the last minute tomorrow. So not much development to show you unfortunately, but I am going to make some dinner now so I'll at least have some cooking to show you. So that is pretty much going to be it for this week. Today I'm just going to be doing editing and then if I finish that early I'll do a bit more balancing later. And then tomorrow I'm going off to Prague. So sorry that there wasn't a whole load to show you this week, but after this weekend I've got nothing else planned for ages so it's going to be full steam ahead until release and I should have a lot more stuff to show you in the next weeks. Before I finish I just need to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters from last month who were Sean McCrory, Stephen Kemp, Harry Stanley, Amian Abdul Fatter, Caffeine Coder, Charlie Quigley, Claudio Dimitri, Daniel Theon, Josh Gill, Cole Fodoraro, Austin Adamson, Roa Solberg Olsen, Danny D, Clouded Dreams, Timothy Gibbons, Wolfgang, Dylan Thompson, Andrew Wilson, Alvin Daly, Alberto Spina, Benjamin Fuller and Alexander Chavez and I'm pretty sure that's the longest list we've ever had so a massive thank you to you guys and of course to everyone else supporting me on Patreon for making this whole thing possible. 
For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.